Welcome to ADI TV. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about the pen tool, but I'm going to start to tackle these creation tools, the next on a section, well, I like to call them creation tools. We've got the pen tool, the type tool, the line tool, the rectangle tool, brush, pencil, and that kind of etc. So like I said, I'm going to deal with the pen tool. So I'm going to create a new document. Um, I'm just going to hit OK, A4 is fine for me. Just to zoom in a little section, I'm going to move the hand tool, it's the space bar, to move across. And then press Apple Plus to just zoom in a tad. Okay, so if you notice it, with a lot of these tools, the bottom right hand corner, the corner is actually coloured in white. And if I click and hold, that means it's got multiple tools which I can select. So it's got multiple tools that I can choose. Um, this is the same in Photoshop and InDesign. There you go, you can see that. Also, once I open this, I have this little strip down the side or the right hand side. And this basically enables me to tear off the tools and move them where I want. So if I click on that, and I can move those tools around. So this is useful if you're working in, you know, really zoomed in and you don't want to keep moving your mouse or you've got a really big screen. Then you can click and select different tools without having to go back to the toolbar. You're also free, if you tear off multiple tools, to join those tools up into one massive toolbar. Let's just get rid of that. Start that again. Okay. So the pen tool, what does it do? Well, it allows you to put in points, which then becomes like a fully contained object. So for instance, if I just click randomly, I can create a shape. Let's close that shape. The inside is white, and that's the fill. And the outside is a stroke, and that's black. And that's represented by these two colors here on the my toolbar. The fill is white, the stroke is black. That's also represented in, in the uh, show options in the uh, color palette up here. And it's the same there. This is pretty much the same as Photoshop, except Photoshop has a background and foreground color, whereas this has a, a fill color and a stroke color. Now I'm free to select that object and I could change the stroke. So if I went to the stroke palette on here, I could change the thickness of the stroke. I could also change the color. So right now, the fill is white and the stroke is black. I could switch those around. I could also actually get rid of the stroke altogether so it's just got a fill. So with these two colors at the moment, I can only ever change the one that's on top in my toolbar, and that's the same in the color palette. So if I select the stroke, now that's on top, and I'm free to change that. Now this little box here with a red strike through it, that means nothing. So rather than assigning a color to something, it just turns it to nothing. So if I want to get rid of that stroke, I can just hit that button and it becomes an object with no stroke. I'm also free to change the color, but there again, if I wanted to change the color, I'd need to make sure that that fill is actually on top. So I'm going to click on it and I could select a color from over here. Alternatively, I could double click on it and I can mess around with the colors this way. Um, and to show you this way, I could bring it over there and just change the color. So that's a really cool tool um, for creating a shape which is non-standard, i.e. not a square or not a circle. The next is the plus anchor point tool, and that allows me to add additional anchor points along a pre-existing path. So I, I can't make a new path with the add anchor point tool. It has to be on a line that already exists or a path. So if I wanted to make the shape more intricate, I could add a couple of points. I could go to my direct selection tool, the white arrow. Select those points, move them out, maybe. Oh, let's undo that. I didn't grab that perfectly. And I could maybe grab that point, move them over there. So you can start to kind of add and subtract points. Um, obviously, the minus anchor point does exactly the opposite. It just removes anchor points. Let's get rid of that one there, actually. Okay. So the next up is the convert anchor point tool, which is probably the most useful tool you're going to come across. This tool allows you to bring out handles and change rather than being a straight line, it can actually have um, a curvature to it. So if I click on one of these anchor points, um, click and hold and pull and move the mouse away, I get these two handles up and these allow me to change the, uh, the angle of the line. Now the first time I pick it up, it always picks up both handles and pulls them out together. So if I do that again, oh, down here actually, it pulls them out simultaneously by the same amount and in opposite directions. 
Now if I wanted to grab just one of those, I actually then have to let go of it and then pick up, pick it up for a second time and that allows me to, mani to manipulate the second handle. So let me just get a shape that's probably better to demonstrate this. Get rid of that. I'm going to go ahead and choose the pen tool. Okay, so it's a triangle at the second, and now I'm going to go to the convert anchor point tool and use that to manipulate this triangle. So I'm going to pick this point first, and really I'm just worried about the point which I'm I'm actually touching at the moment, which is the bottom point. Um, I'm not too worried about the top point, so I'm going to come back in a second and change that. So that's about right for where I want it. I'm going to go back and change that second handle and pull it out to about there, and this bottom one. I'm actually going to hold shift because I want it to um, keep straight. Um, if I hold down shift, it always lets me mo manipulate the line in any 45 or 90 degree angles. And I'm going to grab that and just pull that out a bit. And the same with the top one, I'm going to hold shift key. And okay, so I'm starting to get basically a butterfly wing I'm going for. <clears throat> now again I'm free to change the colour if I so wish so I could choose yellow I'm also free to maybe add a bit of detail to the wing so let's uh, go back to the pen tool I'm just going to create a new layer here um, let's hide options for a second bring this palette up show options again okay so I'm going to create a new layer layer 2 and this layer is obviously on top of the other layer so um, I could lock the uh, beneath wing and I was going to create some um, detail so that's the pen tool and I'm going to go to the convert anchor point tool just change the make that a bit more rounded Okay, and I want to be a bit around as well. Okay, so now I can choose maybe an orange. It's going to be really rough. Oh, it's a horrible orange. It's a bit brighter. And maybe go to my uh, ellipse tool. Just create a few circles of red. I mean, this is pretty pretty rough, but it's just to demonstrate the tools. And then again, I could add another part there. Get the direct uh, convert anchor point tool again. Um, there again, if I wanted to select the orange that I had used before, I can use the eyedropper tool. Select that. One final thing is just to flip this. So if I unlock the layer now, select tool, I'll just click and drag with my uh, selection tool. And if I go to the reflect tool, and then I'm just going to move the reflection there. And I can actually reflect the other butt flowing. So anyway, this is just an introduction. And really, I'm talking about the pen tool. So the other tools I've used has just been to facilitate showing you the different options. Um, I'm going to cover all the tools in more detail, but as I say, yeah, this is just about the pen and the convert anchor point tool. Okay, great. The School of Arts and Digital Industries at the University of East London.